Welcome to this video about the initial roll period of a vessel. Say we have a vessel over here. A waterline. Somewhere there. We have a coordinate system in a vessel here. And say this point is the uh, row axis. Now we can determine a piece of mass here. And the mass has a certain distance from the roll point, and we call that R. So if the ship starts rolling, this mass will move along a circle up and down. That's the idea. What we also can say is that the acceleration equals minus, and the acceleration is contrary to the movement, uh, angular acceleration times the range. So it does matter if a piece of cargo is near the rolling point or further away. So that's the idea. Okay. We know that the force equals the mass times the acceleration, which would be minus m times the angular acceleration times the radius. We can put it in another way. We say, oh well, normally we say that's minus the roll acceleration times m times r. Same difference. So the forces here are equal to the um, upward motion. So we can say, I take a piece of mass over here, which is also a volume, and uh, rolling the vessel is always uh, is also a kind of displacement so um, we can compare this force with the um, writing moment and um, writing moment uh, will be something like um, the mass times the gravity times gz we can write it the other way. We say that's the mass times the gravity times gm sinus roll angle would be more or less mg gm times the rolling angle for small angles. So that's the idea. Um, going back here is that the uh, writing moment is, uh, in our case, um, a writing moment. Um, a writing moment is something like the acceleration times uh, sigma. That's uh, adding all the m r square. So this is the um, i, um, and i is the so-called um, yeah. In Dutch we say uh, traagheidsmoment. Um, I will find the right English word later on. Just go on. Sorry. Sorry for this. Uh... So let's go on here. So we say, well, that equals minus the angular acceleration times uh, a summation. Well, we have a mass 1 at a range 1 from the rolling point. So we have this say this is mass one and we take it here we take another mass, say that's mass two, and it has another mass two and it has another range from the rolling point squared added by so far. And say the last one is M N times R N squared. Say so this is all the masses together giving the writing moment. So we have um, a writing moment and we have a force. And now we could say, well, they should be equal. So um, we put a line here so we can say minus angular acceleration times the mass times the range squared is the mass times g times gm times the angle. So what we can do is we rule out the mass because that's not interesting here and we can say angular acceleration equals 
So we do the minus over here. Um, G times GM divided by the range squared times the angle. So this would be something like the angular acceleration equals minus omega squared times the angle. Okay, combining these two, we see that the omega squared is um, g times gm, gravity, r squared. So we can also say that the omega would be square root of g times gm and the square root of the range squared would be r itself. But we also know that the omega equals uh, 2 pi divided by t. So if we are interested in t, we could say, cross product over here, say that t is something like uh, 2 pi times the range divided by g times gm. Where here the r is the radius of gyration. What we will eventually do, we, we take a, a kind of average radius of gyration and we think all mass is concentrated on this circle and then this would be the radius of gyration. And uh, later on in another video you will see how you calculate that uh, radius of gyration. So one small thing before we finish this video. We know that the angle uh, the ship is rolling, uh, when you plot it, it would be something like a sinus of the angle, of omega t, sorry, omega t. So we differentiate one, we get an angular speed, so that will be a times omega times cosinus omega t, and the angular acceleration would be, well, the derivative of cosinus would be min sinus, a omega sinus omega t, and we do one more uh, the derivative of omega t would be another omega, so we have a square over here. But this says uh, is minus omega squared times a sinus omega t, which is equal to the angle here. So um, it says minus omega squared times the angle. And maybe you were thinking in this step here, why is he writing this? Well, I should have done that earlier, but that's, that's the idea. So we can put this in here. So from your angular acceleration, you can calculate the roll period. So that's the idea. Okay, thanks for watching.